Alright, shallow one. So one. It's a lucky. We'll get started shortly. Trying to get set up, it's a lot. We'll get started shortly. All right, that should be good. Let me make sure this audio is okay. All right, shallow one. Shallow one. First and foremost, want to give all praise, honor, and glory. Unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakhadash. Yeah, that's all praise to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. And his son's name, who the world in the call Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also give a praise on the glory unto the Yahweh Rakhadash, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Aki and Wa'akwath, that you brothers and sisters make your bodies a living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught the truth and real well. Got the uh, got the beloved brother, the bar with me. Shalom, shalom. Kind, yeah. We um, about to watch the brothers at GMS Dallas. About to uh, visit their camp, but before you know, the spirit was just on us, you know, to do a live lesson. You know, um, you know, I was meditating earlier, you know, on my way to camp about um, you know, we're coming to those times, man, to where you're gonna have to be. Well, I guess we go ahead and open up with that in Galatians the sixth chapter. Uh, you're gonna have to be steadfast and persuaded fully, you know, for yourself in this thing. You know, you can't ride the skirt tail, the skirt tail, or the faith of other men or other believers. You know, now although you know the faith that you know our apostles or elders and the leaders, you know, uh, the leaders of this truth, you know, that had, that the Lord, you know, put over us. Although their faith has encouraged us, but at the end of the day, right, it's gonna be your faith or lack of faith that's gonna be contingent upon you being delivered or not. It's not going to be the faith uh, uh, of you uh, uh, being in this thing because of the faith that Elder Tahar has or Elder Gabar has or Elder Apostle uh, Ramlab has, right? It's going to be contingent upon the faith that you have, right? Put your, insert your own name in there, right? And, and of course, as all these lessons, it goes to myself first and foremost, you know, because I haven't went through Jacob's trouble yet, you know, <laughs> and then we're just hoping, you know, and praying through faith, man, that the Lord will keep us. You know, and keep our faith. That's what we want. We want the Lord to keep our faith. But you, you go ahead and get that bubble shot. You want to start at verse 2? Uh, Yeah, we can. Okay, this is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Hamashiach. Yeah, and that's what we're doing now. We're bearing one another's burdens, man. We're praying for one another. Right? We're counseling one another. Right? We're uh, bearing each other's infirmities. You know, if a brother has, you know, a shortcoming or something. Right? Well, you compensate for that. Right? That's why the Lord has given each man according to his measure to where that man he may be lacking in something but with you being a part of the same body you can compensate for that man so you bearing one another's burdens and this you know this uh, teaching the truth man that's a big part of bearing one another's burdens right because babylon has burdened and depressed and oppressed our people right and this truth is what's being used to uplift us man you got it for if a man think himself to be something for if a man think him to be something right if you think that you've got all this faith Right, you think that you the man, right? You got a name for yourself. You got subscribers. You got likes, right? <laughs> you got the nicest garment. Go ahead. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he's nothing, man. At the end of the day, we're nothing. What did what did King David say in the Book of Psalms? He says, uh, "Verily, in our best state, we are still altogether vanity, man." Sheesh. Right. So, <laughs> man, you could be, you could have the biggest beard, you could know the, the <laughs> best, the, 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 the biggest breakdowns. Right, you could go into all the prophecies, right? You can look the part, you can even sound the part, right? <laughs> but at your best state, you're still vanity, man. Why? Because you're, we're under the Lord's curse right now. We're subject unto uh, unto vanity, pursuing to Romans eight and twenty by being in this flesh, man. We're nothing, you know. That's why Scripture says in Romans the third chapter, uh, the Lord did this so no flesh can boast in His presence, man. See, you got it though. It reads, He deceiveth Himself. Yeah, you deceive yourself thinking that you this big guy you this big shot right when really when the lord comes back man he's going to show everybody how small we are man you know joe's piece about how uh man we make our our homes are, are is basically clay it's clay home you know better than a damn crawfish a crawfish lives in a clay home man so do we all right bricks all right mortar cement 
<laughs> right? We're nothing, man. We need Yahweh Bashim al Shah, but it's a privilege that he gave his spirit unto us, man. Right? You got it? Verse 4. But let every man prove his own work. But let every man prove his own work. And we go into that word prove often. It means to test. Right? But how can you test your own work? You got to do the work. <laughs> you can't prove your own work if you don't, if you ain't got nothing to prove. You ain't, if you ain't putting no bricks in, man. Uh -huh. Right? And now you, that doesn't necessarily mean that you got to be teaching. Right? You know, because everybody has a respective lot. You know it, but we all can be putting in work, right? If you're if you're a woman, right? You put in that work. You prove your own work by doing what? By uh, by uh, being a helpmeet unto your head, as it's been ordained for you. If you're a child, you put in work by obeying your parents, all right? You got it. It reads, and then oh, so like and I'll, may I also add, faith is a work. When you read, let me see if I can find that real quick in the book of uh, First Thessalonians. Uh, it's been a while since I. Yep, call Allah Yahweh Shema Shah. This is First uh, Thessalonians chapter one, verse three. We can start at verse two. We give thanks to the Most High always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Verse three, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. See, <laughs> faith is actually a work, man. See, faith is a work. So that's a part of you proving your own work. You got to prove your own faith. Do I actually believe in this? Right? Do I believe in like you know? Because it comes a point, man. Like we're all gonna be face face to face with that, you know. Wherever you may be, you're gonna be separated from, you know, the uh, the church for a little bit, from the from the Akim for a little bit in the time of Jacob's trouble, you know. If that's a part of your lot, and the Lord's gonna, you know, meet you face to face. Do you, do I truly believe in this, man? But this is the time to where you self-examine, you know, and or am I riding the faith off of my leaders? God. You know, if 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 one of my favorite teachers fall out, you know, <laughs> am I going to fall out? All right, that's something you got to ask yourself. And a lot of men, you know, have fallen out because of that. You know, that's why you shouldn't put your faith and your hope and confidence in a damn man. You know, <laughs> no matter how good they may sound, of course, you know, we look up, you know, to to our teachers. But at the end of the day, you got to be persuaded for your own self as, as we're going to get in scriptures in Hebrews 11 chapter. You know, you, God, you if, I could, you yeah, if I could add, you know, we're in a time, just like you said, we're in a time for you to build your own integrity. You can't, you can't survive off anybody else's integrity. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to take the Dorito chip, but he, he not. So I'm going to just chill with him. No, you know, it don't work like that. So you need to be building up your own integrity right now before that time come. Cause if you are somebody that got to go through something, which we all are going to uh, be tested with the hour of temptation, of course. So let's just say that when that time come and you fail because your integrity, well, the Lord isn't going to look at you and be like, well, you can just hop on his wave and I'm going to take both of y'all. Nah, it don't work like that. You yeah. know? So, but I'm going to read verse four from the top, God. but let every man prove his own work. Yep. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone. Yeah. Then you're going to have rejoicing in yourself alone. Why? Because it was your faith. Right through the well, first and foremost, let's get it fixed up. Right, it was the spirit that the Lord put up on you to have faith in Him, and with you working out that faith, as we just got in First Thessalonians, the first chapter, with work being a faith, and you working out that faith, now you can rejoice. Why? Because now you're being delivered. Now you're eating during a time of famine. Right now you're laughing when everybody else is crying their ass out, man. Come on. See, that's what this what this, and we see, man. Hey, when you read Deuteronomy chapter twenty, Salaki, Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two and verse twenty. It's, uh, the Lord called the called the shot ahead of time, man. He said that Israel, we are children of whom is no faith. From the very beginning of our inception of a nation, man, the Lord said that we ain't had no faith, man. Even this generation. This yep. is a faithless generation. Yep. The worst. Yeah. You know, and you see the, the those same spirits back. Those same spirits that, that didn't have enough faith in the Lord in the time in the wilderness. And they want to go back to Egypt. You see that spirit here today. You know, because I was looking at that uh, that fool. That's exactly what he is. He's an old fool, man. You know, uh, Saad Netter. Right? He was basically talking about uh, if there's any he young Hebrews on this live, right? Don't be, don't be hard headed. You know, uh, uh, like your teachers. You know, like the apostles. You know, well, you're supposed to be hard headed in this truth, man. You know, you're supposed to have your mind fully set. You know, what did he tell Ezekiel in Ezekiel the third chapter? Right, he says, uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, well, he says, make your forehead stronger against for their forehead, man. See, so the men of the Lord, the, the true believers got to be, they got to have a stronger mindset of faith. It's got to be stronger than your lack of faith, man. 
And that's what's being built up through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yashah right now. I also got, because the scripture says, be ye steadfast. The, the definition of steadfast on Google, the similar word says uh, firm. Mm -hmm. It also says loyal and faithful and committed, constant, determined, relentless. So <laughs> you basically tell them, don't be relentless in your faith, you Israelites. Yeah. That's just off, man. Yep. Any Anything somebody believe in, you know, you're supposed to be relentless in that. I remember when I was, uh, <clears throat> when I played football, my coach always told me, well, if you don't know the route, you better run something and, and run it like you know it. <laughs> yeah. You know, run it to, you don't, don't half-ass it. If you're going to mess up, you better go hard or go home. Yeah. And it, that's true. So we supposed to be relentless in this truth, you know, mm -hmm. unto death, really. Yep. And, and you know, for us, for you true believers out there, you know, for you sincere Aki and Wa you know, prepare your mind for these people to really start talking shit about what you believe in, about who you believe in, because their faith is crumbling, man. Because their faith was rooted here in America So with their faith crumbling They're like fucking leeches man They want to attach onto it some type of energy Right and they want to try to pull you down man <laughs> Right yes. This is a what he say in 2nd Acts The 15th chapter he says fear not The incredulity of them Right for all the unfaithful shall die in their Unfaithfulness man See so we're not going to let your lack of belief Or disbelief and your hard headedness And your uh, rebellion right Affect us Right, but see, that's going to take the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Shah to be upon us, you know, because that same flesh that they got, we got the same flesh. Yeah. See, that's why the spirit got to override that shit, man. You know, because lack of faith is very contagious. Being fearful is very contagious when you read the law in Deuteronomy chapter twenty. All right, if you had a fearful or faithless man in your army, you send his ass back home, man. See, and these faithless ass people. That's why you got to be separate from these people, man, because that shit will easily try to leak up on you if you ain't careful. See, that's why the Lord wants us to be holy so we could be separate. I mean, so like it, be joined unto him. Yep. Got to be like, a, what was it, a Joshua and Caleb? Yep. In that situation, you know, although they didn't, they they wanted to do something else. They was like, nah, I mean, the Lord said this, so this is going to happen. You know, so that's how we got to be. But I finished this out. Okay. It says, uh, I'm going to read it from the top. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone mm -hmm. and not in another. And yeah. I also have it in the NLT if you Count want it. The water. All right, so this is the NLT of verse 4, Galatians 6 and 4. Pay careful attention to your own work. Come on, man. How you do that? You self-examine. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Prove your own selves. Examine your own selves whether you be in the faith, lest you be reprobates. See? <laughs> reprobates means void of judgment. You're, you're, hey, you're totally cast away. You're done. Yeah. See? But you got it. It reads, for then... You will get the satisfaction of a job well done. Hey, look at look at Noah, man. And <laughs> Noah was able to prove his own work, and he was satisfied. He was rejoicing. I'm so glad I built that. I had enough faith. I built that ark through fear, right? But the spirit of the Lord had to come up on him, to where you know he was looking at <laughs> them dead bodies floating and shit. Oh yeah, you want to you want to uh, what's <laughs> called the deck the deck yeah. looking at all this water. You know, you see no land, just water. Yep. You like woo, call all your hell about Shemel Shah. Yeah, that he saved me. You know, yep. that's that is, that's just how we gonna be in Jacob's trouble. It's gonna be people out here and cases and scenarios that we can't even fathom right now and we just gonna all you gonna have to say is call hello how about shimmer shot that that's not me and hopefully i continue to uh you know uh stay under his wings of salvation man Con. yep but i'm gonna uh, read from the top again Con. pay careful attention uh it's like you pay careful attention to your own work for then yeah why do, also when you read first corinthians the third chapter he says what he says take heed to how you build See, you know, although we're building something, the Lord gave us very strategic, you know, instructions on, on how to build and what to build. Such as when you, I keep referencing Noah because what did the Lord say in uh, Luke 17, as it was in the days of Noah. So when you read the time of Noah, right, the Lord gave Noah very uh, detailed, uh, a very detailed blueprint, if you will, on how to build that ark, right? I want it out of gopher wood. Right? I wanted this mini cube is high, this mini cube is wide, this mini cube is long. Right? So that's why we gotta pay attention to how we build. Is you proving your work. Right? Because what does it say in Matthew the seventh chapter? The winds is gonna come, the storm is gonna come to try every man's found to see what man uh to see how you laid your foundation. Right? You're gonna have some they built upon that rock, and some built upon uh uh, uh sand. Which there's ultimately at the end of the day, man, there's only two foundations. Right, that one foundation is being the chief cornerstone, which is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. And that second foundation is anything of this world. It could be Christianity, 
It could be Islam. It could be, I don't give a damn how good it sounds, man. If it's not according to thus say of the Lord, Isaiah 8 and 20 to the law and to this testimony, it's a part of that other foundation. Right? <laughs> you got it. It reads, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done man. and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. See, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. You ain't got to, you ain't got to compare your, yourself to, okay, well, I was like this brother over there, you know? Yeah. You know, you know, you had your own faith, man. You were persuaded of this thing, right? When you when you understood that Babylon was going to be destroyed, right? You was persuaded of that, so you moved through fear, right? And 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 helped build this ark, all right? You didn't have to compare yourself to nobody else. You had this for yourself. This is a gift. That's the whole point of a gift, right? That gift was given unto you. Yeah. What does it look like? Your your father gives your uh, your little brother a gift. And then you think that's your gift too. No. All right. <laughs> and the father gave you a gift. So so cherish that gift that he gave you. All right. Yep. That was it on that. Uh, verse five. Yeah. It says, for we are each, uh, Slakia, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. We are all responsible. We are each responsible for our own conduct. And the Lord is looking at everybody's mindsets. He's looking at everybody's actions. Right. The way we, we uh, um, treat one another. Right. You know, that's been big. You know, yeah. he has of late, you know, part of the body, man. You know, it's something that we're all, you know, evaluating ourselves, making sure that, you know, we treat each other as we would if you how shot was right. Because he, he is right there, man. Yeah. You know, just because we don't see him with, with bodily eyes, that don't mean he's not there. What did he say? He says, if two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. So do you truly believe that? <laughs> or are you going to just, just say anything that comes across your mind or do anything, you know, that, that you want to do, you know? But um, you had something you want to say? No, you good. Okay. This is uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse... Uh, I'm going to get verse 1, and I'm going to skip down to verse 13. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And when you go into that word substance, it means foundation. Foundation. So <laughs> the very foundation of us being this truth is what? Faith. Nothing else. And if it is something else, you're going to fall out. You may endure for a little time, right? As Mark the fourth chapter speaks about, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, those seeds, fell, some fell on stony ground. You know, you may endure for a little bit, but something, the Lord's going to send uh, some type of situation in your life, you know, to, to offend you to where you get brought out. Hey, and if you think about it with that parable of those uh, seeds, those are different foundations that they landed on because it was good ground, it right. was stony. That's so the good ground is the, the, the fear of the Lord, the faith. But everything else outside of that, outside of that right there, though it's simple, uh, it's still heavy. Outside of that, any other foundation will fall. Sand, concrete, all those things is not going to stand. So you got to be on that good ground, which is that faith. Mm. Only faith, man, is going to get you through, oh, let's say the gas go down 25 cents, you know, or a whole dollar. And then all hell break loose, you know. <laughs> People going to be like, well, shit, I thought this was the truth. Right. But if you really got faith, you're going to be like, okay, I understand. You know the lord is doing something in this prophecy anyway mm -hmm. you know so it's, it really boiled down to do you believe you know yep. you got it all right so let's read that again it says now faith is the substance or foundation of things hoped for and what's the things hoped for man the kingdom <laughs> which is something we can't see right now now how was y'all told us what that the kingdom is is within us right but we can't actually see the kingdom right but we're hoping for it and that's the whole purpose of the lord giving us this truth giving us faith Right to where we can actually envision these things and put ourselves there, you know, uh, uh, um, in a in a in a mind in a particular mindset, having that helmet of salvation, right? And it says, for the evidence of things not seen, yet faith is the evidence. When people say, well, how, how can you prove, you know, a, a, a how is the name? How can you prove that the chariots are the? Listen, faith is the evidence, man. And also with that, faith is a gift. So if you can't believe it, well. You didn't get the gift, man. So be it. So be it. I can't make you. I can't tell the father. Can you please give him the gift of faith? <laughs> open his eyes. Yeah. Can you please open his eyes? No, man. It don't work like that. You got to have this thing for yourself. So this is verse 13. These all died in faith. Yeah. Speaking about those notable foreparents of ours that, that this chapter was going into. You know, Abraham, Noah, Enoch. Right. Oh. Uh, yeah. Isaac, yeah. Jacob, Sarah. Right. It says these all died in faith not having received the promises 
but having seen them afar off. And how did they see the promises afar off? Through the through the spirit of prophecy, man. See, they had this. <laughs> we're we're the Lord is building us up to have the same hope and faith that they did, man. See, they didn't see the kingdom, but they died in believing the kingdom, uh, believing about uh, uh, the kingdom, man, the everlasting kingdom that's come, that's going to come. See, it says, and they were persuaded of them and embraced them. So they were persuaded of these things, man. See, <laughs> them personally, they wasn't trying to ride the ride the curtail of somebody else's faith. No, they were persuaded. Each and every single last one of those individuals, man. In their own integrity. Yep. Yep. That's what matters. Yeah. Cause look at Joel for exa uh, for example, man. Joel was persuaded, <laughs> you know, of his power. That's why when his wife, you know, uh, said curse the curse the most high and die, you know, his children, they all the Lord killed all his children, took everything. Job still kept his integrity. Why? Because he was persuaded that the Lord. Hey, the Lord, hey, the Lord can turn my situation around. And he did. Right? When you read the last chapter, he gave Job double, man. See, so that's going to be the end of our faith, Lord willing. Is the salvation of our souls and us receiving double for our shame as the Lord promised. Yeah, really, hundred folds, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just what our mind can comprehend because really it's going to go into thousand folds and so on because we're going to keep growing. You know, but that's another story. <laughs> you uh, know? Uh. So yeah, let's read that again. He says, these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them you mind going to that word persuaded God. i'm gonna finish it out and were persuaded of them and embraced them yeah why they embrace it because this is uh <laughs> that 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 pearl that yahweh shah speaks about in uh, matthew 13 right that treasure hidden in the field and if you got treasure what you're gonna do you're gonna embrace it you're gonna keep it to yourself you know you're gonna try to hide it from other people Right, it says, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Yeah, they didn't, <laughs> this wasn't their rest ultimately, man. Right, and we're, we're confessing and saying the same thing. You know, this ain't our home. We're just passing through. These bodies that we in, we're not going to keep these bodies. And <laughs> thank you, how about your mouth shot for that, man? <laughs> Sick of this body, man. Yeah. Got allergies. All right, I'm 27, my, <laughs> you know, my joints be popping and shit, you know. How, how you 27 and your joints popping, man? And I take care of myself. I eat good. I go to the gym every day, every day. But somehow I still got these infirmities, man. Memory of fuck with you. Like, yeah. oh, what was that? I can't remember the precepts. <laughs> right, bro. You know, so so even these bodies we in, we're strangers to these bodies. We're pilgrims in our own flesh, man. See? So this is why we, you got to be persuaded that something better is going to come. Hey, with like yeah. Sam Cooke saying that song, change going to come. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's one of my favorite Sam songs. Cooks. Hey, and the brother, hey, through the spirit, the spirit had upon his brother to, you know, been seeing five everywhere and been, you know, yeah. the Lord been having him like a change is going to come. You know, but that, that's right, man. Change is on its way. Second measure six and nine. That's that change. <laughs> yeah. Peace, order, law and order, man. It's lawlessness. But also I have God. persuaded right here. What? And the blue letter, <laughs> it says, um, Strong's G 3982. Pytho. Pytho. All right, Pytho, and it says persuade to persuade to induce one by words to believe. To induce one by words. Now, how does that happen? You got to teach, All right? What does Romans the 10th chapter say? It says faith come by hearing and hearing the word of the Most High. And that's why the Lord set up His men here in the latter days, right, to use these, to use His words, right, through the unction of the Holy Spirit, to to persuade you or to try to help you have faith. Now. At the end of the day, it's all going to rely upon, you know, if the Lord wants you to have it. But this is pretty much the Lord compelling you, man. You know, when you go into that word compel, like Luke 14, 23, he says, go out to the highways and byways and compel my servants to come in. That word compel means to what? To use uh, forcible threats. Right. So part of his persuasion, you was you was scared. You know, the Lord, <laughs> sometimes he scares you into this truth, man. We're, uh, through the fear of the Lord, yep. men are persuaded. We're persuaded. That's right. You know. And that's how Noah built the ark. He was persuaded through fear. You read that in Hebrews 11 and 7. He says he moved through fear, right, of the building of, his, of the ark. Yep. But you got it. And at the end of this, uh, it says to trust, have confidence, be mm. confident. Ooh. And it also says to believe, plainly, just to believe, man. That's right, man. That's, that's heavy right there. To listen obey yield to comply with yeah. you know and that's all under persuade right there con 
you know. But you know, that's it on my end. You got anything? Y'all just got just, uh, one last scripture right Come. here. I'm gonna get straight to the point. Uh, Second Ezra chapter seven and verse um, eight. It says, "And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small." That there could but one man go there at once. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know we we are in camps and we, we be with brothers or brothers that are alone, you know. But ultimately, you know you you on your own walk of integrity, you know. If you take if if you take the MOTB, then you take it. That that's that's you. You can't think you're gonna hop on another brother after that and you're gonna make it no. So you have to maintain your own integrity because why? Because this is your walk in the truth. You know, now you're not just alone because even Yahweh Shad, he had help carrying that cross. But guess what? He could have just, what if he just threw the cross? Oh, fuck it. Healed himself on spot. Fuck right, it. Right. You know, uh, fuck yeah. it. You know, yeah. but no, he went through. He had to go through that himself. Even when they came to get him, uh, his disciples had fled, which was prophecy that uh, all of that happened. But they, they fled and then, you know, Peter followed after. But guess what? He had to go through his own walk. Mm. You know, that's why Peter denied him. You know, because Yahweh Shai had to be. Uh, crucified, you know, but I pulled that out just to show that this walk you're on is one by one, you know, not not the wide path like the world where you got groups of friends, you know, it's one by one individually, right. you know, but right. yeah, so uh, that was the point on that, yep, hey, but yeah, man, you know, Lord willing, you, Akiman Akwath, were uh, edified, you know, that hey, like a hey, brother finished it out perfectly, man, you know, this is a, you on this path by yourself at the end of the day, you, know, you got the spirit with you, but. Hey man, this is <laughs> hey, you gotta you gotta be persuaded in your own mind. But with that, we hope you're edified to next time. We want to give all praise on the glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakadash, DTA Baba Ball, Kwame Sharala, Shalom.